Hello everybody, it's OCD Mad Haven here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the M48 Patton, another version of Know Your Tank. I had two matches inside this that I feel like showing off. Um, keep in mind, these matches are not to the full potential of what this tank is capable of. They are more of aggressive, rushing, uh, getting into certain positions that is just going to help benefit the team, or... You know, the, the M48 Patton's a really good scout medium. It's a heavier medium. It's one of the slower ones inside Tier 10. But still, overall, it's an extremely solid tank, and I highly recommend you spend the time to grind this tank out. It is totally worth it every single second. So, jumping straight into the match here, South Coast Rain. My M48 Patton, you know, I'm sitting here with about a 16-ish nah, perk crew. I'm running Coded Optics. Uh, gun rammer and improved ventilation. Now, the M48 Patton is one of those tanks that, for me, it has earned its right for permanent camo. Then again, this was one of my first tier 10s after the game was officially launched on the console after beta. And it's so far, it has stayed in my garage these past seven years. And I pull it out occasionally just to have some really good matches. Now, the audio in the very beginning is a little bit loud, you know, but I did realize that and I cut it down right before we started the match. So here in the engine startup, you know, a li little bit loud. But we all make mistakes, right? Totally fine. Alright, so taking a look here. There's only one artillery in the enemy team. Uh, two scary tank destroyers. Other than that, pretty good lineup for the matchmaking. Now, south coast, there's a lot of positions to go to. Uh, starting off, I'm a big fan of heading up to the top right. I like to hold the top right. Sometimes I like to rush down the center. Occasionally, I like to go to the beach, too. The beach is not too bad. The beach... It, it is a little bit of a heavy... You know, need, you need some heavier tanks down there. The M48 Patton. Would, it feels like it'd be lacking down there compared to what you can be doing up top with your gun depression, your rate of fire, and everything else that you're capable of doing inside this tank. Now, right here... There's a bush along this rock. There's a couple of them. You can easily line up. Trying to take a snapshot in the light tank. Completely whiffed the first shell. Just gone out the window. It went somewhere. I don't know. Second one. Well, we didn't get a second one because it got around the hill. Now, around, you know, the 9-0 line up here, there's a lot of foliage that you can be using. A couple of positions to pop out, go back down. Putting a nice, good, juicy... 364, a little bit of a low roll for our 390 alpha and sub uh, Patton here. But, you know, it's enough. Right there, going straight through his uh, driving. Probably killed the driver. Yeah. That's why it's fun. You know, talking over recordings, it's going to take a minute, you know. Steps of insanity is what I, uh, I'm getting used to right now each time I talk over a recording. You know, absolutely nothing is wrong. Just monologuing, talking, going insane. Well, all right, 780 damage so far. You know, it's within the first two minutes of the match. Usually matches start off slow, uh, unless you hit a steamroll match, which that was all, you know, a lot, lots of fun. So, aiming for the tracks, wanted to lock him down. Got a little bit of assist damage off of him. Probably one of our heavies or tank destroyer up on the hill on the left side. I'm taking a peek, because, you know, Always keep an eye on your map. I like to play at the big map. Some people like to play at the compass, but for me, the big map lets me know if a flank has fallen, if I need to reposition, or whatever I need to do. Now, these little bushes right here, this is a spot that I like to come to. You know, back up just a tad bit, making sure that I got all the foliage, all the camouflage. You know, I'm running camouflage, muffled shot, green thumb, trying to bolster this crew as much as I can. Especially whenever I pull up my tier 10s, I make sure that I have my best crew in them whenever I pull them out. Now, you know, don't want to get too aggressive right away. You can run into a lot of problems, especially since we don't have, you know, many guys up there at the top left. As you can see, we have a tank destroyer, two heavies, and then down low, we have, you know, a, a pretty good push going. So far, we're evenly distributed. If one side falls both sides will fall. So, you know, playing aggressive, you just want to try and, you know, situate yourself and see what you need to do. Now, as our heavy tank is pushing up down low, 
you know, keeping an eye on the map. I decided to push up because the machine's pushing up as well. So what we're doing is we're trying to cause a crossfire to all the tanks in the top right. And so far it's working out right here. I overexposed just a tad bit. I take a shot, but in return, I did take down the 60 TP. But I'm also now short 440 hit points or however much he hit me for. Now, my premium rounds, I don't like to load premium a whole lot, but, you know, I always carry enough to take down a couple heavily armored tanks or if I'm struggling against a couple of guys that are hauled down. But primarily, I don't like loading them in right away. You know, that's just not my style at all. I like it whenever I can use standard AP or standard APCR and do as much damage as I can. Now, the shot that I took right there, a little bit of a mistake. I thought that I was going to be able to go through that rubble pile, but it turns out that rubble pile will stop a round no matter what round it is. It's considered a, you know, there's two types of rubbles that you can shoot through. So, like, there's some concrete walls that you can put shells through and hit targets behind it, but apparently that concrete just stopped the round directly. Probably made of, you know, adamantite. Throwing in some, uh, yeah, let's avoid that. <laughs> well, so far, the way it's looking, we're down a couple of tanks. You know, it's three to seven. And it's, it's not looking good for the team. It's not looking good at all. But we're well positioned. They did not dominate the right flank. A couple of the people in the left flank did fall back. And now we have a cluster on the hill around G6. Which is a really strong position because if they're in haul down tanks, they can handle it extremely well. So the one closer to H, he probably is lined up against, let's say, the heavy tank at K. Then the tank destroyer that just recently got taken down by the Tiger II is probably now being hit by the medium tank up there. Now, our machine, it looks like, has pushed up to about C8 or IS7 machine. Actually went all the way back around down to K7, K8. So he's way down there, just providing additional assistance. He's also calling out that he's doing a reload, letting everybody know. That's something that's always nice to do. Right here, loading a high explosive shell. Got a 493 and then a waffle. Really good, nice high roll. A lot of the tank destroyers that were up here, you know, um, a moment ago I checked my map. And I checked what tanks were inside the lobby, and that was so then I know how much armor there is. And knowing that there's a waffle, a grill, a charioteer, and the artillery over on the right side, I knew that I could load high explosive and have a very high chance of hitting one of them for a lot more than my 400, my 390 base damage. Now, the fire rate of the M48 Patton with its 7.5 second reload if you're consistently pulling the trigger, you know, you come over, you slap it, you can get out damage quick. Especially if you're high rolling for the 440s or even going, you know, low rolling occasionally. Right there, pulling up on that right side to get that shot off was a really good choice because it allowed me to get the elevation I needed without exposing myself against, let's say, their chisel or the SU-130. Missing a shot, loading in the high explosives... And artillery is now aiming at us. So, no problem here. One shell into the artillery, high explosive. Basically a guaranteed slap. Now, RNG is just going to play against us a little bit. Maybe my aiming as well. You know, right there, we, we hit the gun. Which, the high explosive hit in the gun. You're, you're, you're going to try and splash around that gun. Second shell went low, hit the ground. And our last and final high explosive. Whew. Man. Whenever RNG's against ya. Now, for a moment here, I was kicking it like, alright, cool. Is he behind the bush? And then there he is. Uh, as I'm trying to pull up further than the hill, trying to get a little pixel shot here. And I, I believe I fired too late. But taking this from a 7-3 situation down to a 13-12, evening out the field, our team down in the lower areas performed extremely well. So far, we just got our fourth kill, 4,500 damage. And not a whole bunch of spot assists like the M48 is capable of getting, but, you know, we're being a little bit aggressive, passive-aggressive, trying to get as much damage as we can out, aiming for the hatch, leading the shell, 
perfectly placed into the side of the hatch. Up to 4,912. The match has been going on for eight and a half minutes. You know, it was a very well balanced out match. The team performed extremely well. And, you know, there, there's not much to say. But matchmaking like this, I would love to see more of it. Where people are a little bit more aware of their maps, knowing their roles and positioning that they need to take. It's always... It, it's critical to pay attention to your map and knowing your tank and where to go. Now, right there, high caliber, first class mastery badge. I'm working on my second mark inside this tank. 25 shots fired, 17 direct hits, and 16 penetrations. Now, we have a second match, which we are going to go ahead and get up on steps. Now, the reason why we're doing two matches for this tank is because the first one, we were a little bit more passive, but we held a flank. We were aggressive whenever we needed to, and we had really good shell choices. On this map, well, Steps is a really difficult map to get positionings in because it's not updated yet. It's still on the older system, so there's a lot of spots that everyone is used to going. For me, I like to head down into the little, you know, the heavy zone, the, the heavy fighting. So let's say around the one and two line going down there, battling around that hill. Uh, occasionally, I will go to the encounter depending on the tank that I'm in. But for this match, I was playing solo, did not have a team with me. So I was like, you know what, let's go take the little bit of the heavy fight and see what we can do. Now, knowing that mostly heavies come down here, inside of your mediums, you can be a little bit more aggressive and get to stronger positions early on. So, that's what I did. We're going to be heading over to G1. And calling out help, letting the team know where I'm going. A nice, beautiful snapshot on that Pershing. And lucky for me, I got behind the hill just in time for the grill to hit it. Coming over, trying to get as much spot assist as I can. Keep them lit up as much as I could. But, you know, since they're behind the hill, I can only do so much. Putting an APCR round through the top plate of the Yag Tiger. So far, 100% accuracy this match. You know, that that's always nice. Second shot, 436. We're up to 1,302 damage. Not even a minute into the match yet. 929 spot assist. Now, coming around this corner, looking at my map, I see I have two heavies, two mediums, artillery up behind me, two of them. Tank destroyers off in the distance. None of them around me that are going to be able to support me. But the heavies... They're close enough that they're going to be able to get shots in for targets that I spot out or targets that they spot out. And as you just saw, we had a heavy behind us launch a 416 into the chisel, which made him fall back. So right here, this position at G1, you know, I'm going to be able to spot people through this mountain and easily take care of it. Now, the tortoise is coming around. I do not want to deal with the DPM that tortoise can throw out. So just focus on the tracks that's all i'm going to plan on doing is taking down the tracks you know the team's going to see he's stuck out in the open watching my map you know behind me there's multiple heavies another tank destroyer and i know that the chisel is also still back there that shot that i tried putting in just barely i was trying to get some damage along with tracking but he's at a very nice angle that i just can't seem to get those shells to go through now Paying attention to my left, trying to angle the side armor, pre preventing the Sudoka T-50 to go through. Uh, dropped the gun down in the way, which, honestly, accident. You know, inside of the M48, the gun's not big enough to really block shots, and it's going to break more often than not. So that's one of those ones that I try to avoid. But here comes the Sudoka T-50 again. Trying to keep an angle on him, do not want to give him the side. Puts a shell in, bounces possibly off of our turret, or maybe even the top plate. Gets completely finished off. Yag Tiger coming around, matching my side with his, preventing him from being able to turn around on me. Get a single shot in, you know, slam on the throttle, get up behind him. Uh, lucky for me, those heavy tanks, they weren't around that corner. They didn't pull out to shoot me. Um, I was panicking a little bit right there, but then I got my bearings, and I started to get back into the game. Putting a 396 into the E100, you know, perfect shot. Nice, perfect shot. Already, not even, 
three and a half minutes into the match, and we're at 3,800, 2,765, and now we have two heavies focused on us. And another thing is, our team, I have no clue what happened. We have one heavy near us. Everyone else is around the cap. Now, right here, you know, the goal is just survive. So, <laughs> that was probably one of the best shots of the day for me as well. Being able to put that into that Panzer Seven, set him on fire. I was going to try and get another one in, but, you know, the 540 damage that he's capable of doing would have knocked me out if I tried to pull out. I should have, because he's probably ammo rack since we set him on fire and he burned so long. Instead, coming around the corner, trying to get behind the corpse, and oh, there we go. E100 knocked us out. Well, that happened. That happened extremely fast, and that did not feel good. So, we're going to go ahead fast forward through this. This IS-4 player kind of surprised me for how he played. Not exactly the smartest. Um, no comment. But, jumping back for this last match, we made money. We made 42,486. We did 5,853 damage, 3,274 assisted damage as well. And keep in mind, these games were back-to-back. -back. This was not like I had one match where I, you know, did okay, so I recorded it, and then an hour later, this one popped up. Quite literally, if you look at the time frame... 416 56 a.m. If you want to go ahead, go back, check out the other one, you'll notice that the other one was probably at four o'clock. <laughs> you know, these these matches were just really good matches. Great way to start off the day. So Grill 15 spotted, Fatherland spotted, uh Sadoka, we did 1000 damage to him. Panzer 7, 1550. So far, looking good. Performed really well. Most of the team also did really well. We held that flank as long as we could. We took down a couple of tanks. And it basically gave us the win. So the M48 Patton. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of reviewing tier 10s. Just because I'd, I'd rather review tier 8s. Tier 10s, they should be self-explanatory. But who knows, maybe in the future I might start going through my list as I get more. And review them. So... Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, or whatever it is. And uh, for all my regulars, I'm finally starting to try and make thumbnails, which I'll tell you now, they're a pain in the butt. So, until next time, you guys have a great day.